There's something refreshing about New Year's resolutions because they're our choice. We decide if it's right or wrong to smoke or drink or eat too much, and we decide whether to change. In some ways, resolutions are a celebration of freedom. Government, however, is not. Government is force. The press is fond of running headlines like new law to improve health care or create safer food or provide green jobs. The reporters imply government's just guiding businesses so they do the right thing. But government is all about force. Government is force. And the force keeps getting nastier. Let's take just one mismanaged state, California. Okay, maybe it's the most mismanaged state. Last year, California politicians made what some reporters might call New Year's resolutions for the self-improvement of its citizens. Starting this week, new buildings must be energy efficient. Restaurants may not use trans fats. All incandescent light bulbs must use less energy. This is even before the feds ban these altogether. Health insurance companies may not charge women more. The list goes on and on for 725 resolutions. No, they're not resolutions. They are government force, brutal force enforced by men with guns, says Fred Smith. He's the president of the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a think tank devoted to free enterprise. And also joining us is Bill Morangus, the CEO of Smokestick, a company that makes a product that was almost crushed by California politicians last year. So tell us about your product. Well, it's an electronic cigarette, mimics smoking, acts like smoking, and it's great. The FDA called it a nicotine delivery device. Technically, that could be stated, but it's more of a pleasure delivering device, which enables somebody to not have to smoke and kill themselves. And as I understand it, the stuff that really hurts you in a cigarette is the smoke. And, well, how does this work? This doesn't give you the smoke. No, it doesn't. It uh, basically, it vaporizes. Instead of burning, the combustion in a cigarette is what kills you or what gives you all the carcinogenics. What we do is we just take the simple version and break it down and give you just the puff, the enjoyment part of it. Take a puff, show us how it works. Fred, can I offer you? They come in these little cases. They Well, a little small, yeah. but sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> how do you like it? And oh, I haven't smoked in three years. Oh, <laughs> So you quit with these? I was three-pack-a-day guy. But in California, the legislature moved to ban these? Yes, it, it originally started as a ban on sending, selling to anyone under 18. Then somebody snuck in there and said, let's make it so that nobody can sell them, period. That, of course, so. is the argument you often find. We're defending the children, and pretty soon we're all treated as children. It's, well, that's the point. Somebody always sneaks in something somewhere. So they passed a law banning these, but then Governor Schwarzenegger vetoed it. The Terminated it, yeah. <laughs> so he, he did some good things, he did. The, the governor. And I mean, I have some quotes here from tobacco-free kids. No credible scientific evidence says e-cigarettes are safe. They risk deterring current smokers from quitting by providing an alternative source of nicotine. Well, that statement in itself, that it's not safe, there is nothing safe in this world that's absolutely 100% safe. Their motto seems to be, quit or die. <laughs> Either quit Either cigarettes or. altogether. <laughs> but that's and, not right. And there are these other ways to quit, the uh, pat, nicotine patch, nicotine gum. There are. But what people, I guess, if you're not a smoker, it's hard for you to understand one thing. A smoker over the age of 30 likes to smoke. And so it's not just likes the addictive. the process. He, uh, I enjoy it. I mean, I just do. Uh, to me, this was like getting a pill, taking it, going to a buffet, and eating all I can eat, and I'm not going <laughs> to get fat. And it mimics the cigarette. It glows red on the end, yeah. and what looks like smoke comes out. This isn't carcinogenic smoke? No. It's just propylene glycol. It's the same thing that's in an asthma inhaler. It's the, you know, it's... It's normal. It's an it's, it's a inert gas. So and, and Fred, your work at the Competitive Enterprise Institute makes you very familiar with a lot of these bands. We showed at the beginning of the show the police with guns drawn coming into a place that was selling raw milk. 
I think there's a puritanical dislike of people actually enjoying things that haven't yet been sanctioned by the state, by government. So things that have been banned recently, these, <laughs> those alcoholic energy drinks with some caffeine in them, like Four loco, Juice, Moonshot. We've passed bans on texting while driving. I'm sure they won't work. New regulations on power plants, new taxes on makers of drugs. Uh, th these always cause some unintended consequences. I think of the Endangered Species Act. We want to protect Endangered Species Act. It created a new phenomenon called shoot, shovel, shut up. Yeah. Explain. Our desire to sort of have government act as a paternalistic promoter of these things just creates the kind of unintended consequences. We don't want species that would take our property away, and so when we see them, if we think we can get away with it, we shoot, shovel, and shut up. Those are, because people don't this dislike... This is known to farmers, ranchers, everywhere. all over the West. And, and it grows up from the view, when, when you pass laws that are in tension with human nature, mm -hmm. whether it's e-cigarettes or whether it's endangered species, you block the real moral improvements that are possible. Letting things happen by cultural and technological change rather than by rushing them in prematurely with inadequate actions is, is, has proven time and time again to create the unintended consequences, disrespect for the law, and often technologies that are less efficient and often less desirable in the goals of the people who put the laws in place. And talk about what Tocqueville said about America. He worried that America could devolve a form of tyranny that had never been seen before. Not a tyranny that was cruel, with whips, and a tyranny that would be kind, gentler, wanting only our happiness, as long as they could define what our happiness I'll, was. I'll give some of his quote, a network of small, complicated rules. It does not break wills, but softens them. It does not tyrannize, it hinders, represses, stupefies, and stupefies, and finally reduces each nation to being nothing more than a flock of timid animals of which the government is the shepherd. In another place, he said, they want to treat us like children, like parents treat their children, with one difference. They never want us to grow up. Thank you, Fred Smith. Thank you, Bill Morangus. Coming up, more government bans. The ban on oil 